Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for being here today. I wanted to welcome you to an information session for the International Center for Cooperative Management. I'll briefly take you through the background of, of what we do and jump into information about our programs. So um, I'm Erin, I am privileged to be the education manager working with the center um, to uh, support and steward the degree programs as well as the non-credit executive education and other programming that we do. I've been a long time a supporter uh, and, and heavily involved in the cooperative sector across Canada and beyond. And uh, so I came very intentionally to these programs to uh, to ensure that other folks have access to this type of education that allows us to grow and elevate our club sector and our impact for members and communities. So in terms of our time together today, uh, some background foundation where we came from, why we exist and uh, what it is that we do. Jump uh, to through there into the co-op principles, which hopefully look familiar to folks. Uh, of course, of these seven principles, all of them integrate into the education that we do and inform what we do. Uh, operationalizing these principles is a big part of what we help people to become fluent in and to navigate. Uh, but certainly number five stands out being directly explicitly about education and in particular, uh, business education. Acknowledging that co-ops are a unique business model, although they have social and other um, drives and ends. Uh, it's certainly worthy of saying there are different ways to organize the economy and one of the business models is a co-op business model. And so we're pleased to be able to specifically offer enterprise uh, education about the co-op business model. Again, even if it's a, a socially driven organization which is often an element of many co-ops and credit unions. So there are really three pillars uh, of success or grounding for what it is that we do. Uh, the first being our sort of academic integrity. And so the fact that we're located within a business school at a long-standing, well-established institution is certainly a big part of our success and, and why we are happy to and proud to be affiliated and, and integrated. And that all of the accreditations that apply to our other programs like our Master of Finance or MBA and other programs at the master's level in the business sphere um, also apply to our programs. So that academic rigor is behind everything that we do. If you're visual, it may be helpful to see a map and see that we are located on the east coast of Canada in Nova Scotia and Halifax, uh, the provincial capital, and uh, that we're on Mi'kma'ki territory. So we are an international center, and even though we're grounded in Nova Scotia, the work that we do, the people that we attract, the partners and the professors and the folks that we engage in research with, research with are across the world. We're proud of that because we know bringing people together in those conversations is uh, a big value, not just the education, not just the research and those foundations that we're able to facilitate, but uh, certainly the fact that we can bring people together as living case studies learning from each other. The second pillar for our success is the fit for the sector. And that comes out of the, the grounding and the foundation of our programs that is uh, in conversations mainly between folks in North America and the UK, but some beyond as well, really saying we often will want our leaders to be educated in business, so we send them for MBAs, um, but we don't always make sure that they then get the fit for the co-op sector. So the, the big idea with our education is that we could have an alternative to the MBA that was specific to the co-op and credit union model. And uh, so that's really where all of this came out of. And, uh, and to this day, we still have a cooperative uh, that oversees what we do that is comprised of folks from uh, primary, secondary cooperatives and associations, as well as other academic institutions and uh, uh, thought leaders in the sector as well. To inform what we do, to ensure that we continue to evolve, that we offer new programs, that our content stays relevant, and that we continue to make partnerships with folks all over the world. So uh, making sure that we have impact with sort of the, the correctly orienting 
um, our education in a way that does deal with the complexities of the co-op business model and managing multiple bottom lines, not just one. Often the financial bottom line is the main motivator in a lot of business that's focused on return to shareholders and investors. And of course, co-ops are often more complex than that, uh, ideally. <laughs> and so we help people to navigate that. That's what drives what we do. And being able to optimize our business model so that folks can, in fact, uh, know how to uh, get better uh, in serving members and in having impact for members and the community and seeing how that infiltrates all aspects of what we do in our cooperatives, everything from marketing to you know, how surplus is allotted, um, how capital is raised, uh, how we manage our, our democratic aspect of what we do and um, how we manage people within our organization. Just so much of that, um, you know, the cooperativeness is sometimes added on as an element of what we do in our in our businesses and our co-ops, but uh, we like to think of it as infiltrating every aspect of what we do. So we help people to navigate through our education. The third pillar is that we've created ourselves as an international hub for cooperative management and, uh, and knowledge. And so uh, just naming two of the people that lead our center, Karen Miner on the left, she's the Vice Chair for Cooperatives and Mutuals Canada, the national apex organization for all types of co-ops in Canada. Uh, she's also been a management consultant for a number of decades, is heavily involved in research now. And she also serves as the Chair for Credit Union Atlantic. Uh, and on the right is Dr. Sonia Nopovich, and she is a cooperative economist. She's the academic director for our center. Both of these folks teach uh, in our programs as well. Uh, Sonia is very well published uh, and, and leads a lot of our major research projects. And uh, she's also the chair for the International Co-op Alliance Committee on Co-op Research. So we're, we're happy to say that the tentacles of our center in terms of who we're connected to and the knowledge base that we're developing uh, continues to grow. And that we're, that's a big point of pride uh, for everybody involved. We certainly don't think of ourselves as just a small team. It's certainly all of our partners, all of our connections, all the people we get to work with and serve. But just a sampling of some of our faculty, mainly at this point from Canada, the UK and uh, the US. And uh, we're happy we can, because we do uh, remote learning, online learning, we're able to recruit people who are experts in their field from all around. The foundation of some of our education, of course, is based on research, original research that we do within the center in partnership with others as well. And uh, just a little bit of a snapshot to showcase some of the reach of our center in terms of the amount of countries and sectors and so forth that have been involved. The diversity of, of folks that are part of our programs is certainly part of the richness. So we do our best to have uh, current and innovative knowledge, of course, and, and literature and, and research and uh, tools and so forth that are um, customized to the co-op sector and also in contrast to and borrowing from other sectors where appropriate, uh, but certainly being able to be in a cohort with folks who are also in this sphere of working in a cooperative business, even though it's a different area of the economy or a different area of the world, that exchange has always been a really big part of what people value in engaging with us. Just to name a sister center, uh, we have the Center of Excellence in Accounting and Reporting for Co-ops and Dr. Daphne Rickson, who leads that center is also a professor in our programs. And the center is really looking at how is it that we're able to measure and define success in a way that is unique to our business model. And so of course, if we're borrowing accounting instruments, if we're borrowing metrics for success from non-co-ops, we might end up driving how we spend our dollars, how we make decisions, how we do governance in ways that are away from the core of, of what co-ops are intended to do, what our members might want us to do. So she's trying to innovate in that space to make sure that co-ops in credit unions in time will have those types of metrics to be able to say, how do we uniquely define success? And then how do we drive management and governance decisions um, through those lenses. So jumping into the education. So we began with the master's program, again, an alternative to the MBA for the co-op sector, and then over time have evolved to meet people's needs based on how much time they have, how much funding they have, what background they already have and so forth. So um, again, our board and feedback from our students and sector have helped us to evolve what we do. So 
I speak about the master's and the graduate diploma programs together because they are uh, in, in so many ways very similar in the sense that the application process, the application criteria, the admission criteria, the, the courses up to a certain point are the same. So they are within the same cohort. And so the master's program is three years online part-time and the graduate diploma is 16 months. Um, they both start with the joint five-day orientation. We used to do this in person on campus and we will again when uh, the world works better for convening people, of course. But in the meantime, we do that online. It's about two and a half hours a day during the week. This year, it will be August 9th to 13th um, where people will be uh, convening online where you get to understand the systems that we have access to, the Brightspace online learning platform that we use, the library, um, get connected to the cohort, meet some of the professors, learn about what to expect. Um, you know, have a couple of projects and, and ways to connect and, and get oriented and feel comfortable moving into fall courses. So courses start in September for those uh, programs and uh, the orientation is in August. And we leave, one of the courses we leave open between those two so that people can sort of poke around, do some pre-reading, see what assignments are coming up and that type of thing. In our learning platform, folks have uh, access to courses 10 days ahead of time. And our courses run in three terms, the fall term from September to December, and then January to uh, April is our winter term. And then May, June, we have a six week spring term as well. And so out of a 52 week year, we have about 35 or 36 weeks a year where students are in classes. And again, it's part time, um, but it is 15 to 20 hours a week for these two programs, which means it can't be off the side of someone's desk, but it does mean that all of our students are working full time while still studying. So it's still doable to do those things in conjunction. We just always ask people to be thinking ahead of time to see how they can carve out of their schedule time to make the most out of it and to, and to really be able to engage in all aspects of the program. So that's why we give people access to courses ahead of time so they can read and prepare and so forth. And in terms of the design of the courses, typically they're either six week or 12 week courses. They're typically two modules at a time, uh, meaning that the design of the courses is in two week modules. So the first week of that module is often at the beginning of the course, there's a one hour live session. It's recorded if you can't make it live and meet the professor, see your peers, uh, ask questions, get a bit of a teaser for the content of the course. And then often that first week is for reading and viewing either lecture videos or, um, or reading lecture notes. And then the second week is often the interactive part where there's often a discussion. Not all professors do that, but many do because you know, people learn from each other. And, uh, and then there's often a paper or assignment component too. And there's often a final paper in each course and there's alternatives available. Our professors are very flexible. If someone says, I'd rather produce a video or I wanna do a presentation or um, I wanna create a tool, um, there's a lot of flexibility in that. But we don't do exams and we don't do an entrance exam, which people are happy to hear. We know that that's not the highest level of learning in terms of people's comprehension and really wrestling with the content. So we, uh, we try to do the thing that's gonna help things stick and, and help people in their work. Um, we say that folks use their cooperative as a case study um, and a living lab throughout the program, meaning that we hope that your degree isn't just useful to you at the end of it, but throughout your investigating different aspects of your organization and getting to know it more deeply and being able to apply what you're learning to your work and vice versa. And all of our students sign a confidentiality agreement so people can hopefully speak freely with their with the class on what they're learning about their organization, where they would critique it, where they see room for improvement, what they want to celebrate, and so forth. We do a 10-day study tour to Italy and Spain in the master's program. It's now an option in the diploma program as well. It would just mean that the timeline for that program would extend beyond 16 months. 16 months is just uh, core courses um, to that time, but there is an option to trade out a couple of those courses and instead do other courses in the second year. So if you say, want to take more time with marketing, and so you want to do that course instead, you would trade out one of those courses. Anybody who wants to hear more about that option, we can, we can talk more about it. Um, but the study tour is an option for the graduate diploma, but it's baked right into the master's program design to happen in the spring of the second year of the program. Of course, with COVID, we're navigating that a bit differently. We're hoping to go in 2022 in the spring. So we're sort of collecting cohorts and two of them will go together then, but we'll see the state of the world at that time. 
Um, the master's students do a final research project that they can explore something either uh, determined in conjunction with their organization or something of a personal interest. We have a, a sample list of some of these on our website, but basically if there's a topic that maybe comes up in the course of the education where you want to go much deeper, or even a specific line of business you want to explore, or even a broader thematic thing like you want to look at, um, you know, how gender is handled on boards or um, in different engagement strategies or different governance practices. These are things that people can explore. And we uh, look at all the desired topics of students and match folks to either professors in our program or to experts in the sector uh, to be uh, mentors and supervisors as you complete your final project. Yeah, so, uh, and I think I said 35 to 36, but yes, yeah, some years it ends up being 34 weeks of the year where classes are in session. So a big break over the summer, a few weeks in the, um, over the winter break, and, you know, often a week break between each of the courses at least. Uh, yeah, so hopefully that gives a bit of the foundation for those two programs. Um, and I'll give a little bit more here. You can see the curriculum. It's just samples of uh, the courses and the topics that are covered in the programs. And if you want to see the division of what's included in the diploma program versus the master's, um, you can visit managementstudies.coop where we have the timeline listed. You can see there's a lot of things here that you would also find in an MBA program, remembering that each of those courses is customized to the co-op business model. I did speak about the study tour already. The, the areas where we visit and our partners, unfortunately, were very hard hit by COVID. So um, we do plan to go to Mondragon in 2022, um, but we'll see how everything goes, of course, up until then. And then typically what we do is we alternate. So people who start in, um, in 2021 would likely go to Italy in their second year. People who start in 2022 would likely go to Spain, but those things are to be <laughs> made more concrete as we know more information. But we, we choose these regions of the world because they have a very, um, heavy density of cooperation and often very complex and very long standing cooperatives where we're able to meet with scholars in the universities uh, there that we've established relationships with almost 20 years ago now. Um, we're able to meet with leaders in the sector to have critical conversations about how they run their cooperatives, how they deal with issues of market pressures and globalization and, and various things like this. So um, they're often big, big highlights for folks in the program. And so we'll be happy when we can run those again, again, hopefully starting again in 2022. I, I'll skip over this kind of briefly, but most of the time when people hear about our programs, it's because they know someone who has been through our programs. And so I just wanted to showcase that we, we continue every single year we make updates in our programs to make them uh, more relevant, more current, uh, you know, more interactive, or we change the format to better fit people. And so just to flag that we have made some significant changes in the last few years. Some of them are just rolling out coming into the fall. And so if you do know someone who's been through the program um, and they tell you about how it was for them, I just wanna flag that um, there are things that have changed about it, hopefully all for the better. For example, the graduate diploma program used to be 20 months and have a research component. Now it's just 16 months and it's all course-based. The master's program has new courses. One of the things we've added is a research course for the master's students so that leading up to their final research project, they have a course where they're able to understand research methodology better, figure out better home in on what their research question is, how they want to go about gathering information. Some students go more the direction of uh, a report, like a sector-based report. So it's informed by the literature, might be informed by some interviews, but it's a little bit more on the... Um, less on the academic, more on the sort of uh, sector report and sector knowledge and language and management report style type of thing. Um, whereas some people go more heavily into sort of the academic research, do a mass survey or um, something a little bit more complex that way. We do have students that have gone on to do PhDs, um, but yeah, we have some flexibility in terms of what that looks like. Anyway, that's just an example. There's a picture from orientation from a couple of years ago. These, many of these folks are graduated already. It's nice when we can bring people to Halifax and we look forward to doing that again. Um, I'll watch the chat if there's any questions. 
but I will move on to just sharing a little bit about um, what our graduates have said about our programs in terms of, see the stats there, the impact that it's had for them, um, that they would all recommend their program to other folks. That means the world to us. We definitely wanna do things that are valuable to people um, and that they're satisfied with the program and that um, their education significantly changed how they think about see and, and do their jobs. And just to give an example of the variety of students that we have, Rebecca is someone who works for a worker cooperative. She's based in uh, New Orleans, and she's um, someone who her focus is a lot more on transformative economy and communications, a lot of facilitation work. It's an example of a student. She's moving into third year right now. It's an example of a graduate, uh, John, who does cooperative development work, originally came from a taxi cooperative in the US and now works at a, a co-op development center, as well as um, it went on to obtain a PhD and to teach. So people take different paths. This is another one, Jessica, who works with the cooperators. Um, insurance and uh, she was someone who started in a very technical role in her organization. Um, I think she was doing programming and code writing um, at the time and uh, and has gone on to be a, um, a vice president at the organization. So it is application season. Um, applications are due May 31st or until full. We say that because if we get a lot of applications and, and fill our seats uh, before then, then we might not have any seats left by May 31st. So if you know you wanna do it, I definitely encourage you to get in touch with us or start the application process. Um, um, however, if it comes May 31st and we still have a couple of extra seats and you, you know, you, you really need to apply this year, we definitely encourage you to um, get in touch with me and we can see what's, uh, what's available if it's after May 31st when you hear about this opportunity, for example. So in terms of admission criteria, having an undergrad um, with a three out of four GPA is ideal. If, if that's the case, then we sort of have an understanding of your academic background. We feel like you'd uh, be ready to engage at this level of education and that checks the box. If you're someone who um, doesn't have an undergrad or you had an undergrad where you ended up um, not performing very well for whatever reason, we know sometimes 18 year olds make decisions to do programs based on parents' advice or counselors' advice, and it's not always a fit, and that's okay, then get in touch with us because we can look at equivalency as well. For example, if you have many years of work experience, if you have leadership experience, if you've done non-formal or informal education, that also counts. Um, that you're involved in the co-op and credit union sector, even if it's adjacent, if you work for a government agency or a co-op association, um, but that you have some knowledge of the sector and that you're directly involved. Um, that you have a letter of support from your co-op saying that they're willing for you to investigate your own co-op as, as part of your education. Oh, and that you have two letters of recommendation. They can be professional or academic, university and college transcripts. And at, um, we have an online application system where you can submit all of these things and we accept unofficial transcripts to get the process started. And by, the, by December of your first year, you can submit your official transcripts. So that's the, that's the steps. Just to give you a bit of a, an alternative, our certificate program is comprised of five courses from the master's program. And they are set up as an executive professional development program, meaning that they're not for credit when you take them. But if you decide to go on to the other, um, to the other programs, we'll give you advanced standing in those courses uh, for all five of those courses. So it ends up being a 7.5 credit hour equivalent that you would gain. So not have to do or not have to pay for again if you went on to the other programs. Uh, you apply through our center office directly, so we don't require letters of reference. So it's a little bit of a more simplistic application process and a shorter statement um, to be able to uh, sh show and showcase to us why it is you want to do the education. And we do a shorter orientation in August just to get you primed and knowing the, uh, the system, the education system Brightspace that we use. Yeah, and then just to give a, a, an example, we do have uh, short courses coming up. And I apologize if there's background noise. 
Um, we do have um, upcoming executive education courses here uh, that are shorter courses that allow people to access some of the conversations that we have while um, perhaps they're not able to engage in these larger programs, or maybe they're from the board of directors, or maybe they're uh, past graduates or people considering our more in-depth programs who wanna get a sampling of what we do, then uh, we have these programs. So the next one that we're doing is September 15th and 16th, and then October 20th and 21st in partnership with NCBA Clusa. We also do the Canada DE program, which is a leadership program specifically for financial co-ops for credit unions. It's actually part of an international consortium of folks who do leadership education for credit unions. We're the Canadian hosts. And it's part of a certification process to become a, a DE, a development educator, doing uh, being able to do mentorship in other continents, countries as well. So we, it is very important in this program that folks be able to convene in one room. We have to bring together many countries in one room. So we postponed our 2021 and we'll set dates for 2022 when we better know if travel is safe for folks. But it's an awesome program. We don't give too much on what's actually contained in it. It's a bit secretive um, in the sense that it's meant to be a, a leadership program where people get to come in and sort of take the plunge and immerse themselves in this space with other credit union folks from around the world and think about their impact on communities and what the credit union difference is and go home inspired and take on a, a project as well. I won't say too much more about it, but uh, we can put you in touch with our program uh, leads on that if you want to learn more. This is from a director of a credit union who took this and said it was life altering and, and went home to do a, a project as well that had a really big impact for the community. So I will say that we, we pride ourselves on, again, being a hub for the co-op community to convene. We, we do love it when people want to engage in our education, support us, tell other people about what we're doing, engage with us in research, lots of different ways to uh, connect for sure. Um, we really like being able to share through social media, different events that are happening, news from the sector, innovations that are happening, great case studies, publications. So we keep our, especially our Facebook is probably the most active social media we have. So certainly if you'd like follow us there, we have a newsletter we put out every two months um, with lots about what's happening in our center and beyond. And, uh, and we try to make it as jam packed with interesting things for all of you. Um, so feel free to sign up for that as well. It's on our main page at managementstudies.coop. And if you wanna partner with us, I, I mentioned about the co-op that oversees what we do. Anyone can become a member of that cooperative. It's a hundred dollar lifetime membership, the Cooperative Management Education Co-op and be part of these conversations that inform what we do and, and talk about what's needed in the sector in terms of management, business and governance education. And of course, enroll if you're interested and, and talk to me and reach out. If ever somebody reaches out to us and they say, I really want to do the master's program, but um, whether that's money or time or, you know, timing um, or politics or whatever it is, then reach out to us and we try to find a way to get over those hurdles together. We have a bursary fund. Uh, we have lots of partners. We... Um, yeah, we're in the in the business of finding solutions for folks because we really believe that the sector um, has a lot of potential and already is, uh, you know, there's so many co-ops and credit unions that exemplify what can be done and, and the kind of impact that we can have for members and the community and uh, how we can do responsible business and in a way that uh, that really does take up the principles and values and, and build them into everything that we do. So. Um, we also know there's a lot greater potential for a lot of us, and that's why people are often attracted to what we do. And so please do reach out to us, consider doing education with us, consider working with us or connecting. And, uh, and I welcome anybody to reach out to me. My email's here on the screen. If you have any questions, if you want to talk about it, if you're thinking about doing it down the road, um, certainly let me know. So thank you everyone for taking time to view this video and for considering uh, and, and taking an interest in what we're doing at the center. I hope everybody has a great day. <laughs> Take care.